Usually when a manufacturer tells you that quadcopter is unbreakable, I take that as a challenge and then I go destroy it and go ha ha ha. This right here is the Correa Rea Talon V2 frame. And Correa Rea, they've, they've done something crazy here. And I gotta say, it's either gonna be brilliant or it's gonna be a disaster. And I'm not even sure by the end of this video, I'll be qualified to tell you which is which, but I'm gonna do my best. Correa Rea has always pushed the boundaries of what is possible with quadcopter frames. In this case, they have gotten rid of the vertical arm. I mean, it's very, very reminiscent of the other uh, Talon frames, but they don't have the big, thick vertical arms like the previous Carrera Talons did. And I gotta say that I feel like that's gonna be a plus when I personally take this out and fly it. When you have big, wide vertical arms, you get a, a, a sort of a rudder effect as you go through a turn. The quadcopter really carves through turns like nothing else. But the downside is that if there's any wind at all, it totally gets blown offline. And personally, if you could guarantee that you were racing on a completely windless day, then I would think that it would be a great racing frame. But since that's often not true, I felt like the talons, it was a, wasn't quite for me. And it, and it definitely wasn't quite for freestyle. But this is not a freestyle frame. This is a racing frame. And having gone to, you still got a little bit of a vertical arm there, but certainly not as much as the carbon fiber ones. But they've gone to a completely different material. This is, I mean, presumably it's injection molded and it's plastic. And the first question that I have about that is, is it stiff? Because let's not name names, but there have been some other injection molded plastic frames out there and they were not super stiff. So let's see if we can give this a little twist. Yeah, it's got, oh, I'm probably gonna need that. In case you're concerned because I just twisted it and some part fell out, I've actually taken it apart so you guys can see inside and because I needed to bind the receiver. Um, so I'm gonna show you the inside in just a second. That does not happen under normal operation. But the big question about this is the durability. You can see that they have fully enclosed the electronics in this canopy. And this canopy is, well, it's pretty freaking hard. And does that mean that this stuff is gonna be much more protected than it normally would be? Durability test, very soon. The canopy is held on by four screws, one, two, and two on the other side, which go into a, a horizontal sideways standoff. And I've pulled those out and I just want you to see how this all goes together. It's very, very cleverly done, although it definitely is a racing build. It is a tight racing build, not probably gonna be your very first quadcopter. You're gonna to struggle to get all this stuff in here, in my opinion. But it's very nice. Uh, the camera is held in right here. It screws into the front. It's a micro-sized camera. They've got one of these PCB-based Crossfire racing antennas stuck into this shark fin, which is also there to help you turtle mode and flip over. And that's pretty clever. Uh, it's not gonna give you the same range as you would normally expect from the normal Crossfire like an Immortal T, but for racing, you usually don't need kilometers and kilometers of range anyway. And very cleverly, they've got this Luminaire micro axi antenna stuck in the back here. Uh, again, that is not a location that's gonna give you the very best range. It's gonna get blocked by the body of the quadcopter, but for racing, again, the maximum range is usually not your biggest concern. Durability is your biggest concern. Now, in case you hadn't figured it out yet, I did not build this. I, sh these things are so precise in how you build them. You really have to look at an example built by someone who has really worked it out. Or maybe if you've done a ton of race builds, then you already kind of know how your stack is gonna go together. You can see there's plenty of room in here for a typical stack. Um, we've got a 20 millimeter ESC, 20 millimeter flight controller, and then a VTX and uh, receiver stuffed on top of there. And once you've got that put together, it's gonna go in pretty much any frame you stick it in, but the first time you build it, it's gonna be a freaking disaster. So when Carreria asked, do you want us to build this for you or do you want us to send the kit and have you build it? 
I said, do you want me to review it in the next six months? And they said, fine, we'll build it for you. That being said, there is an aspect of this frame review that I am not going to be able to comment on, which is how easy or hard it is to build. And I don't feel too bad about that because, I mean, I feel like when you get this frame, you pretty much know what you're getting into. This is a not a first time build. And I do want to call out this one thing which Careeria says many of their customers make this mistake and break the frame. When you route the battery strap, the battery strap goes underneath this, this little slat here. It does not go over it. The slat is just there to kind of hold the battery strap in place. If you route it out and over this one, you know, in some way, then if you cinch down on it, it will just break off. That's not how it is. So you can see how the battery strap is intended to go. Well, that's the frame, but the real star of this review might very well be the Korea Rea turbine motors. And these turbine motors have cooling fins, which are supposed to direct air down through the windings and help cool the motors. And that's, I mean, cooler motors mean that you can fly harder without smoking motors. You can push your D gains farther. You can push your filters farther. And although these motors are tailored for racing, and I, I asked him, you know, what about freestyle? He's like, well, we don't really have them set up for freestyle. It's the difference between a freestyle and a racing motor anyway. I don't know. But the, these could be good for freestyle as well, because when you fly freestyle, you definitely want to be able to push your filters as little filtering and as high a degain as you need to control your prop wash oscillation. And a lot of times motor heat is what is the limiting factor there. So a motor that cools itself, well, that's kind of exciting. It's worth saying that Korea Rea motors have always been some of the highest quality, highest build quality motors you can freaking get. Um, they were, it's a controversial topic over who was the first to do the single piece curved wall bells, but they were certainly one of the first, if not the first to do that. This curved bell design, in my opinion, improves durability because which is more resistant to impact a an arc or a straight line. An arced outward is gonna resist impact more. It also lets you get, the, with curved magnets, you get less air gap. These are very, very high performance and you really pay for it too because these freaking motors are $32 a piece. So you really gotta want them. But they are very, are they $32 motors? I don't know, that's for you to decide. They are very, very, very nice motors. They're not just like a $20 motor that somebody slapped a bigger price tag on. In case you're curious, the whole thing weighs 295 grams without a battery, or if you just put a typical sort of battery on there, it comes in at 472 grams, which is very, very respectable for, well, for a racing quad or a freestyle quad. It does have the ability to strap a GoPro on top if you want. There is a slit through there. Presumably that's for a GoPro holder, although it's pretty clear that this is designed more as a racing frame than as a freestyle frame. Now, how am I gonna test this claim that like, air goes through the motors and cools them down. That is very tough. Carreria has shown a smoke test on their website where uh, smoke is pulled down through the motors. Mm, that's pretty clever. They've also shown a test using an infrared thermometer that shows that the motors stay cooler after like 10 seconds or 30 seconds of running compared to the non-turbine version of the same motor. I do not have the non-turbine version of the same motor. And to be honest with you, <laughs> The ability to control all the variables for a temperature test is, I think, pretty freaking hard. There is a test that Carrera did that I think is worth doing, uh, and that is to spin the motors up on a scale. So I'm gonna tear out this scale, and I'm gonna plug in this. This is a 4S battery, hold on. And I'm gonna take my radio master here, and I'm gonna arm the quad. Oh, hang on, tear. And you can see that the motors alone are in fact generating thrust. We got about six grams of thrust. Now this is without props and the pit controller is actually trying to spin the motors down. So we would, not a perfect test, but it does kind of confirm that the motors are pushing downward air. Six grams of thrust from a motor alone? You know, to be truly scientific, we should test that against like just some normal motors and see if like they all do that. This is the Newbie Drone Vivid frame with the Newbie Drone Smooth motors. To be fair, these motors are 1750 kV, the Korea Rea motors are 1950 kV, but we should at least be able to like demonstrate if the effect is real. Well, 
Well, there you go. It does seem like the Carrera motors are pushing air downwards and generating thrust. And where could that air be going other than down through the motor? Whereas if you compare them to these Nubi Drone Smooth motors, which have just straight horizontal uh, spokes, they just don't seem to generate any upward or downward thrust, which is kind of what you would expect. So then the question is, how does it fly? And how durable is it? No better way of finding out how a quad flies and how durable it is than to take it to a race and beat the crap out of it. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna. Well, you take a couple practice runs. What tell you all did it? Race eight. Yeah, you can hit it hard as you want, man. I make sure the horizon is level and everything on. Right? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Where's Moon? I don't want to hurt Moon. Where's Moon? He's uh, he's right there. Uh, by, he's towards you on your this side of the bend. Okay, hang on. Let me get my line. Let me get my. Let me get lined up. So I'm gonna come from here. Uh, Whoa! Just missed it. <laughs> Woo! Woo! That was a little scary. Get it hard. I'm, I tried to. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh! oh. Sure. I think I've seen parts. Is it truly indestructible? Wow. So this this uh, antenna, I did that. That's not how he shipped it for reasons. I that's my fault. The frame is motors. Let's put the battery back on. Let's fly it. Where's the battery? Let's do it again. Oh. I did, I heard something. Sorry, Mr. Steele, I broke your battery. It'll probably still fly. I thought I saw stuff fly, I guess it was just the battery. Just the battery. Let's wow. see if it takes off, let's see if it goes again. We're still flying. He's We're... out, he's out of memory. Josh, you got it? it you got it? Yeah. I crashed this quadcopter into that metal park bench two times, and each time, if the battery hadn't ejected and the props hadn't broken, it could have just gotten up and flown away. In fact, I was prepared to come here and tell you that it took no damage whatsoever. 
In fact, let's pretend that it did and there wasn't a, like a gotcha coming in just a minute. This thing took those hits so well. Usually when a manufacturer tells you that a quadcopter is unbreakable, I take that as a challenge and then I go destroy it and go, ha ha ha, you silly person, what were you thinking? And look at it. Like there's a tiny scuff here at the front and there's like a little nick here on this pointy spot. But overall, you cannot find any damage to this frame whatsoever. And I defy any carbon fiber quadcopter frame to take a hit like that and just walk away. Down in the comments if you think you know which one would have taken the hit. I'm really impressed. But then I went and finished recording this outro the first time and went to record some close-up b-roll and I found you hit something hard enough eventually it will break you will find the weak spot and I found the weak spot and the weak spot in this quad is the screw holes where the stack goes through the plastic there gets really thin and in the hit it flexes the bottom plate and it is starting to tear those screw holes I don't think that even should change the conclusion about this frame it is shockingly durable. The fact that it is not completely indestructible when some jerk like me intentionally tries to abuse it as hard as he can should not be seen as a deficit. Nevertheless, in the interest of full disclosure, I have to say it did not come away from those hits completely unscathed. What about the motors? It's a lot harder to judge the motors. These are very good motors. I see a lot of motors and you pick up a motor and you can tell about the machining and about the like the air gap is super small and yet despite the fact that the air gap is super small it didn't bend a shaft and you don't have any rubbing after those crashes. These are very good motors but they're also 30 plus dollar motors and it's hard to argue that you're getting that much better of a mo maybe you are but it's like you just I just couldn't couldn't say that with any confidence without like doing testing hundreds of them to see how durable they were and so forth these are good motors it's not just a cheap motor marked up to thirty dollars and ripping you off at the same time a lot of people would be better served by spending say twenty two dollars on a mid-tier motor and breaking it and so forth Again, anything will break if you do hit it hard enough. The fact that these motors drive air through them and like cool themselves down, I, it's, hard, it's a cute trick, but most people aren't that close to smoking their motors anyway. So the fact that the motor runs just a little cooler isn't gonna make that much difference for most people's experience, I don't think. One other thing about the frame that has to be acknowledged is the frame is pretty flexy. Plastic will never be as stiff as carbon, and when I first started to fly it, I used my standard Betaflight setup of taking the filter sliders to 1.5 and cranking the D-gain just a little bit. I just do that on most quads because most of the time that gives you a smoother flying quad. This quad, the minute I took off, tick, 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 it was twitching and the motors were making a weird sound as if there was not enough filtering. Now I had to turn the filters down to the Betaflight default of 1.0. And I had to knock the D-gain down a little bit. The flexiness of this frame is going to limit your ability to tune it to the absolute ragged edge and get the absolute most prop wash free handling out of it. That being said, it still flew fine. I don't have any complaints about how it flew, but the flexiness is going to affect your tuning and that certainly has to be acknowledged. All that being said, I feel like this is a really great product. And given how, how important durability of a quad is to most people, any small deficits in it are more than made up for the fact that it is just so freaking durable and that it protects its own internal uh, electronics so freaking well. Um, lifetime warranty? You want a frame with a lifetime warranty? How about a frame without a lifetime warranty that just is going to last for freaking ever except the, for the fact that these screw holes seem to be a weak spot. Oops. If you've decided that this is the frame for you, there's a link in the video description to where you can pick it up. Thank you to Careeria for sending me this build. I am really impressed with what they've accomplished. This is an amazing frame. I'm really impressed. Have a fun, you guys. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or 
join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.